Hey, good morning, everybody. Robert Phoenix here. There we go. I'm trying to look presentable for the camera today. What's going on out there? This is your daily version of edition of 15 Minutes of Flame. It is a 9.07 here in Flyover. I've got a co-host today. Here she is. Where is she? The lovely Rosie. There she is. Uh, yes. See, Nathan's cats don't do anything. My cats at least do something. At least they, they get in. I do like Nathan's uh, program, though. I do watch it. I'm trying to just get in the zone here a little bit. So you get the owl. The owl. Get my owl in. All right. I think. Oh, man. Okay, here we go. Sorry. I got to get comfortable today. It's, the comfortable part is very important. Hey, Judy, what's going on? All right, so we got a lot to get into as he muscles around his little uh, studio here, makeshift sure studio. Got a lot to get into today and a lot of follow up from yesterday's stuff. It's really kind of a follow up day. There's nothing new that's uh, really uh, drastic and breaking. So, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow up on some of the observatory stuff today and I'm going to kind of get a little bit deeper into the Kavanaugh mess. And it, it, it's another mess it's another obstruction by uh the left and uh the arm of the progressive socialist communist wave that wants to take over uh this country and even to some extent the world and quite frankly i don't think that the so-called leaders of the world give two shits about what system is in place um, although I'm sure they would much prefer a version of the EU sort of China hybrid version of socialism and communism. So we're going to get into that a little bit today. What's going on with the Kavanaugh thing? And of course, I'll have meanderings and ramblings as I normally do throughout the proceedings here over the course of the next 30 to 45 minutes. It's been a really busy day in Robert Phoenix land. Just uh, any time of an interview that I do with Regina Breaks, I get a tremendous amount of uh, contact and people wanting to do readings. So if I haven't responded to you via email, hang in there. I will. And um, just I just uh, it's been station to station. Yesterday, I did the show. I got up and I was I was done with readings by about five o'clock, with just a few you know half hour breaks in between. Anyway, I'm just giving you a heads up. I'll get, I'll get there. All right, let's jump into some stuff. Let's get into, uh, let's just go right into the Kavanaugh material. So yesterday uh, I got into how Kavanaugh's uh, uh, mother was a circuit judge in Maryland and how she presided over a number of cases with, um, with Blassie's father who was uh, an attorney and uh, a real estate guy. Hey, good morning, Christina. So as an attorney and a real estate guy. And I began to think, like, what's really going on here on, on a certain level? And one of the things that um, popped into my head was that, you know, these people are both from the Maryland area. And any family that's got any significant amount of power and clout in the Maryland, D.C., Virginia area, and I, I and I may be kind of um, overhyping this just a bit, but there's probably a pretty good chance that they're spooks and that they have some kind of connection with the intelligence agencies that are uh, really deeply connected. That's like the tap root of the intelligence agencies. You've got the NSA, you've got the CIA, you've got the FBI. I mean, those are the big three. And then there are other, other groups and agencies that are, I wouldn't say they're below them, but there are groups you haven't heard of, okay? And people are part of them. The FBI, the NSA, and the CIA, that's mostly for public consumption. Just keep that in mind. So while I have not done a, 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 an extensive deep dive on the Kavanaugh family, there is some 
evidence that's emerging from the Blassie family that does actually uh, support this thesis that she comes from kind of a deep, I wouldn't call it a deep state, but a, but a deep intelligence, perhaps MK Ultra Illuminati family. And if that's the case, I'm, I would probably be willing to put money down that Kavanaugh comes from the same brood, the same, the same social sect. So I think what we're actually seeing here are two Illuminati families kind of duking it out in some ways. But what's, uh, what's key to understand and note here is that um, uh, Christine Blassie is being used at this point in time. She's being weaponized. She's being weaponized by Dan Feinstein and she's being weaponized by, oh, look who's in here now. She's being weaponized by the left as, as an obstruction to get Kavanaugh elected as the Supreme Court justice. And the, the, here's the deal. Now, I'm not a big Kavanaugh guy. I'm, I don't know. I wasn't a Gorsuch guy. I mean, Gorsuch, Gorsuch got in, barely. He got in because there's a, there's a very liberal side to John Gorsuch. If you look into his family and the church they belong to and their kid, and you know he lives in uh, Boulder, Colorado. and you know, So there's a liberal side to Gorsuch, and I think they kind of uh, you know, held their nose and looked the other way. That's what happened. So he was pretty much, I wouldn't say he was a slam dunk, but he was about as close to a slam dunk as you can get uh, from that coming, you know, you I mean, a slam dunk would have been somebody who was, could have been an absolutely leftist activist judge. And of course the left would have just you know, rubber stamped that and put them right through. But Kavanaugh is a bit of a different, different character. Uh, he, he strikes me as somebody who is kind of a lifelong lifetime, uh, I would say on the conservative side, but the, the, the type of conservative that is willing to uh, bend their, their identity as a conservative in some ways. I and mean, he looks the part, doesn't he? He's got all those girls and you know he's white bread and everything, but I, I don't really trust him. In fact, I trust very few people in government. That said, why don't we go down the rabbit hole here and let's get into some uh, controversial information about Christine Blassie and find out who she is and where she comes from. Now, I'm going to be reading you some content from uh, Sorcha Fall. Now, Sorcha Fall, we have to always take just a little bit of a couple of grains of salt with Sorcha Fall. Okay. Uh, so, but there's some interesting information in here, and uh, I'll let you decide on where you fall on this. Okay. I'm just going to read this to you. An intriguing in depth new foreign intelligence service report circulating in the Kremlin today Kremlin, states that Stanford University psychiatry professor, oh, she's a psychiatry professor. That's a special kind of professor, if you know what I'm saying. Named Christine Blassie has become the latest centerpiece of the Central Intelligence Agency plot to harm President Trump. By the way, looks like Sorcha Fall has gone over to the QAnon side. I'm just giving you a heads up here. Um, with her last minute allegation, just days prior to Senate confirmation, that Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh had attempted to sexually assault her over 30 years ago when they were teenage school children while well, being kept from the American people about doc, what is being kept while well, being kept from the American people about Dr. Blassie is that she currently oversees the CIA undergraduate internship program at Stanford university, uh, developed by the notorious CIA connected Stanford university psychiatric professor, Dr. Frederick T. Uh, Melgus, who himself in 1985 took into his care, the homeless woman, Lois Lang, who assassinated CIA paymaster Nick Deek, and, and that afterwards saw the CIA's black operations money being controlled by, drumroll please, Ralph Blassie Jr., who not so mysteriously just happens to be the father of Dr. Christine Blassie. Okay, this is interesting now. We're into some interesting territory. So we have an MK Ultra connection 
vis-a-vis uh, Christine Blassey and the professor from Stanford, uh, and he's a CIA-connected professor, Dr. Frederick T. Melgus. Okay, an aside here, just a little aside. So I've told this story before. I'll tell it again because it's pertinent to what we're talking about today. There, when I was uh, in California, I was. It was a really interesting kind of two day thing. Uh, I think it was. It was a two day. It was a two day thing. Uh, I went to stay at that time. I was really good friends with the. Uh, still am. I just haven't seen him in a while. Stephen Kent, who's a tremendous didgeridoo player, fantastic. And Stephen and I were putting together kind of a a. Uh, performance we were actually Stephen was asked to do the performance i was there as sort of the logistics liaison at stanford to open for the dalai lama so i got kind of an up close and personal view of of dalai land and that was a trip in and of itself okay very very odd very strange so we were there uh, the day before to kind of do a walkthrough with the two locations that Stephen was going to perform at uh, and then we had kind of a, a tour, general general tour of the campus by the guy who was involved in uh, events. He was the event director at Stanford. Super cool guy. And one of the one of the things he said, we're sitting down for lunch, and he'd been there for a while. He said, he said, Stanford is Langley West. He said, this place is just crawling with spooks. And that always stuck with me. So just file that away. All right, back into the content here. According to this report, with Trump being warned just prior to his assuming the presidency by the powerful Democratic Party U.S. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer, that U.S. intelligence services have six ways from Sunday getting back at you. Uh, This past nearly two years has shown just how prescient this warning was and whose latest strike back against Trump is coming courtesy of a rogue CIA faction who just trotted out for the public display one Dr. Christine Blassey, married named Christy, Christine Blassey Ford, who claims as a young high school teenager, Brett Kavanaugh, also a high school teenager, tried to sexually assault her, but whose evidence for this being true shows Dr. Blassey unable to name the exact year it happened. Her not remembering where the incident took place or how she got home. Her not being able to remember key details of the incident. Her not being able to remember how the gathering came together the night of the incident and her not telling anyone else about it at the time. So this is an interesting series of little factoids. She can't confirm where it happened. She doesn't know the exact year it happened. Um, She doesn't have the exact details, except that he forced herself upon her, put his mouth on her hard. Uh, And she doesn't even remember how she got home. Okay. So there are two things here. Number one, she's bullshitting. And this didn't happen, or it happened maybe in a very minor kind of way. And she's just stepping to the front as sort of this weaponized witness. Or she was under some kind of MK Ultra spell, in which case she wouldn't have any memory of it at all. She would just, you know, it would be just another black patch on the uh, screen of her mind. I'll keep reading here. As the deep state aligned U.S. mainstream propaganda, media began flooding the airwaves, newspapers, and internet with Dr. Blassie's claims against Judge Kavanaugh. But have absolutely no proof or evidence behind anyone could ever investigate this report continues. SVR intelligence analysts were immediately able to bring up her file in the archive of known and or suspected CIA operatives whose placement in this file was due to her extensive and advanced educational training at Stanford University in the CIA-funded mind control brainwashing program developed by Stanford University psychiatric professor Dr. Frederick T. Melgis, whose primary mission for the CIA was to develop new technologies for interrogation and torture, secondary applications, we're going towards studying the possibilities of exploiting highly suggestible subjects and getting them to do things, murders, couriers, they wouldn't otherwise do, and of which they would have no memory in case they were caught. No memory. How about that? So here's an abstract in here uh, for MK Ultra. A lot of redacted 
components. Link to Dr. Blassie's SVR file of known and or suspected CIA operatives. This report notes that her father, Ralph G. Blassie Jr., a proven CIA operative who from June 1962 to January 1974 was the vice president of National Savings and Trust of Washington, D.C., a CIA black budget bank best known for being 100 paces from the White House, 100 paces from the White House, that's where that bank is, and whom in 1998 was taken over by SunTrust Bank, whose majority share owner is the CIA-linked fund, uh, investment fund BlackRock. BlackRock, a big black rock sitting right there in the middle of Mecca, right? Big black rock is Saturn. That's what it is, black rock. The importance of noting the CIA banking connections of Ralph G. Blasey Jr. This report explains due to the outbreak of what is now known as the CIA bank war and who started of in 1982, the CIA seized from, uh, CIA seized from publication news reports uh, this is declassified about the bank war. The main CIA operative involved in this war and whom Ralph G. Blasey Jr. reported to was one Nicholas Deke, a longtime OSS and CIA operative, both during and after World War II, who ran the CIA's main black budget operations under the direct command of the feared CIA counterintelligence chief, James Jesus. Angleton. That's a bad dude right there. James Jesus Angleton. That was a guy that was involved in the Kennedy assassination, by the way. So there's a printout here of Angleton and Nicholas Deke together. This is from the New York Times, published April 21st, 1977. So this is when the economy was going sideways, thanks to what was it, 17% interest on any loans during the 1970s? It's like, yeah, let's make it really hard for Americans to get ahead. Let's put let's let's put 17% on the, any loan they're gonna get. To how the CIA prevented the total breakdown of the Western banking system in 1982, this report says was by their illegally laundering hundreds of millions of dollars of Columbia drug cartel cash into it to keep it afloat in an operation overseen by the CIA's James Bond of money, one Nicholas Deke. But when President Ronald Reagan and his administration found out what the CIA had done, started investigating it, um, and saw Deke on November 19th, 1985, being assassinated. Okay, so in 1985, this guy Nicholas Deke was assassinated by a homeless woman named Lois Lang, who had mysteriously managed to travel thousands of miles across the United States from Seattle to conduct this killing in what news reports at the time described as Lang saw him and turned the corner with purpose, aiming the pistol with both arms. When she had Deke in her sights, she froze transfixed. It was as if she had finally found what she was looking for, a witness later testified. D seized the paws to lunge and grab Lang's throat with both hands, pressing his body into hers. She fired once next to Deke's ear and missed wide before pushing him away, just enough to bring the gun into his body and land a shot above his heart. The bullet ricocheted off his collarbone and shredded his organs. Deke crumbled onto the floor. Now you've got yours, said Lang. A witness later claimed she took out a camera and snapped photographs of her victim's expiring body. The bag lady then grabbed the banker by the legs, dragged him into his office, and shut the door. Wow. Pretty unusual, right? Though the American people were correctly told that Nicholas Deke, assassin and Lois Lang had previously been under psychiatric care, the report continues, and what was failed to be reported to them was that Lang had been under the direct care and medical supervision of the CIA's own Stanford University psychiatric professor, Dr. Frederick T. Melgis, just prior to her traveling from Seattle to New York City to carry out this assassination 
and who was the exact type of assassin Dr. Melgus had been working to create in his CIA-funded mind control MK Ultra program. Can can you say La Femme Nakit? Anyone? And whose Canadian victims are still being silenced after Prime Minister Justin Trudeau this past December posed a gag order on them to keep them silent. But why does but but that does apply to Judge Kavanaugh accuser? But that uh, Dr. Christine Blassie, who remains able to teach her CIA undergraduate internship program at Stanford University, the MK Ultra mind control techniques discovered by Dr. Melgus. Like his daughter, Dr. Christine Blassie, this report concludes CIA black money operative Ralph Blassie Jr. remains secure too, and who today is the vice president of business development of Redcoats Inc., whose Admiral Security Services provides armed security for the deep state elites in Washington, D.C. That is overseen by Redcoats Inc. co-founder and vice chairman William F. Peel III, and whose data watch systems, Peel III, also controls the U.S. government contracts extending until the 23rd of June 2023 under the category of 246.421 to provide U.S. defense and intelligence agencies with facility management systems to include accessories, repair parts, computerized systems, surveillance, monitoring, control, signaling, and reporting multiple functions, all of which SVR intelligence analysts believe American people have the right to know about, and they're evaluating claims against Judge Kavanaugh being leveled against him by Dr. Christine uh, Blassie. Uh, But we know that'll never happen. But you're hearing about it here. Okay, so one of the things that's really important That's the end of that uh, report. One of the things that's really important to to note about this is the relationship between Blassie, her father, and her father's connection to to, to central intelligence and to what we, I guess we'd call it the the deep state now. That's, I guess that's the new buzzword has been for a while. Um, You know, and there's always that kind of rubbing the shoulders with the military industrial complex when you're in the intelligence services. But what's fascinating here is the parallel between Christine Blassie and David Hogg and his father, Kevin Hogg. Kevin Hogg essentially has the same profile with a few exceptions on the banking side, although Kevin Hogg's father is clearly involved in movements of large sums of money. That's, that was part of uh, Kevin Hogg's father's background. And it feels like that the Hogg family has, again, deep connections. Not even feels like it's there. Deep connections with uh, intelligence agencies and the military industrial complex. We know that Kevin Hogg was uh, a field agent for the FBI in Southern California. His base of operations was the airport, Los Angeles International Airport. That was where he spent most of his time. And uh, he eventually moved out of that and away from Los Angeles and got a job with Cubic. There's that <laughs> Cubic communication, Black Rock, Cubic. I mean, these people, they can't get enough of Saturn. They love Saturn, love it. And so, what does Cubic do? Cubic does, in some ways, a lot of the same things that the uh, agency that I've, or the, uh, the business that I was talking about, um, or just read, Admiral Security Services, Red Coat Sync, they do very similar things. Although I think on the cubic side, probably a bit more on the computer simulation tip, which, of course, if you're going to have an operation um, at a school somewhere in Florida, eh, you probably want the really sophisticated computer simulation stuff going on. So, again, what we're looking at here is somebody who has ties, like intense ties to intelligence agencies, MK Ultra, perhaps Christine Blassie herself might have been. Um, a guinea pig in the MK Ultra laboratory would not surprise me. Um, and who knows what's going on on the Kavanaugh side? You know, I don't necessarily think this is a a uh, um, an internecine battle between the black hats and the white hats. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think that's the case. But um, you know, you hang around Washington and Maryland and Baltimore and Virginia, and you're into things like. Um, you know, being being in the, in the judicial, 
on the judicial side of things, being a judge, a district judge. I mean, there's, there's just so many opportunities to connect in with these um, sort of dark pockets of power, which is what I certainly would describe what's going on in the Christine Blassie side. And will this come out during the testimony? No, of course it won't come out because, and I believe this to actually be true, by the way. I don't think that this is fake. I think there's meat on these bones, even though it's coming off a sort of file site. I think there's meat on the bones here. I think I think there's uh, something to, uh, to, to examine. And at the very least, from just a superficial level, which is what I got into yesterday, that there have been presiding court cases where Kavanaugh's mother presided and ruled over Blassie's father on a number of occasions, but at one point in time, one that had to do with mortgage default, if I'm not mistaken. So my God, what a tangle, what a tangled web. And Diane Feinstein, Emily and I are going to do a, um, a mashup, I think tomorrow or maybe today. I don't know if she's off today. If she has time today, we'll do it today. We're going to do a mashup on Feinstein and what's going on here. Um, Emily, of course, from the uh, gymnastics side of things, has some really interesting intel to offer in that Diane Feinstein is the point person for all, all these young gals from Univer uh, Michigan State the gymnasts, they're all going to Feinstein and she's sort of, you know, running point for these gals and, and Michigan state and Larry Nasser. And so what that says to me is that there's a cover up involved. And I think Emily and I'll probably get into that, that there's something going on with Michigan state and that whole Michigan area, which we got into before when we actually did our, our, our show on the gymnasts. I mean, it's got, it's got a deep, deep background in, uh, intelligence and particularly uh, mind control, and uh, we can get into that maybe tomorrow. And, and in fact, we probably will. When we flip that, we'll see. Anyway, um, is this going to come out during hearings? No, no. But you need to know about it. And you need to understand that there's an agenda here. And I'm not, you know, again, I'm not really into. Um, it's a Kavanaugh character. I'm not, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not carrying water for him, like I said yesterday. But I do believe that he uh, is, is being kind of unfairly attacked. I mean, this is just the norm now. This is the norm for the culture war that we're in, the resistance. By the way, uh, James O'Keefe, it's really funny. A couple of days ago, I'm thinking, hmm, where is James O'Keefe? Where is that guy? What's he doing these days? And lo and behold, two days later, James O'Keefe has a new piece where he was hanging out with this dude who works in the State Department in Washington. And um, it's a total, total leftist. He, he's, he, he uses, his, he'll be gone. He'll be fired. That'll be interesting to see what happens with that. Dude. I mean, he's low-hanging fruit, right? He was a guy who um, actually had a job, uh, was involved in computer programming, uh, uh, scalable data, you know, all that stuff, right? You know, he, something that he probably found interesting. And that was with Obama. And then Obama left, of course, and they reassigned him, and he doesn't really have a job. So he's there from 8 to 8, 30 to 5, and he does pretty much nothing except uh, now plan for the overthrow of the current <laughs> presidency. And he makes no bones about it. I mean, I think he's 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 like a He's like a catfish. The guy's a bottom feeder, but the way that the way that uh, 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 James O'Keefe works is that he will get to the next level, right? There'll be somebody just a little bit higher than him, and then he'll get to sort of this next level. So, you know, it's serial journalism. A lot of people don't like him. Uh, I don't have a problem with him. Because there's nobody else that's doing anything like that, you know. And they say his practices and his techniques are, you know, they're they're not fair. You know, there's a lot of deception going on. And well, of course, first of all, they've got to deceive who they are. That's number one uh, to get the information out. And number two, they're going to edit the things that are going to make the most impact. 
it's the way news works, whether it's James O'Keefe or CNN. And I think at the very least, it's an interesting counterbalance to that uh, type of uh, uh, journalism and reporting from inside the mainstream. Um, okay, why don't I go into the old chat room here, see if there's any uh, activity, uh, a little activity. Love the mashups with Emily. Yeah, man. Emily and I do good stuff. Hey, by the way, my greeting was sung to the tune of Hey There, Georgie Girl. Ooh. Strutting down the street so fancy free. <laughs> I love that. When I was a kid, I loved that song, Georgie Girl. I'm hoping O'Keefe takes it up a few notches. That's usually what he does, Judy. He usually goes a couple levels higher. Hey, so um, the other story that we're tracking here is the observatory story. And I've got a few news pieces that I want to jump in on. You guys might be interested in on the observatory side. So um, why don't we, I got three of them and they're all connected and related. So here's, here's the first story. This is the, the now this place sunspot is in the middle of nowhere. It's I guess um, Alamogordo is probably the closest place. And then, there's another part of uh, New Mexico. Is it Weed, New Mexico, or something like that? It's sort of nearby. Anyway, uh, this is the headline here. This is from Gizmodo, which is a sort of a tech review site. And it says here on, on the uh, cease section, New Mexico sheriff demands answers. Calls FBI chicken shit <laughs> over handling of mysterious observatory closure. When FBI agents told local law, local law enforcement, you tried that in the morning. To stand by after the closure and evacuation of the National Solar Observatory in Sunspot, New Mexico, on September 6th, Otero County Sheriff Benny House did not hide his confusion. The FBI is refusing to tell us what's going on. House told Alamogordo Daily News at the time, we've got people up there at Sunspot that requested us to stand by well, they evacuated. Nobody would really elaborate on any of the circumstances as to why. The FBI were up there. What their purpose was, nobody will say. Maybe he should change, exchange notes with the sheriff in Las Vegas to get a handle on how, how uh, transparent and uh, cooperative the FBI is. The mysterious closure drew national attention as others echoed the sheriff's bewilderment. Citizen sleuths theorized that the agency was hiding military testing or proof of extraterrestrial life. Then on Sunday, the agency that runs the observatory, the American, the Association of Observatories for Research and Astronomy, ORA, finally explained the reason behind the closure it was an investigation into criminal activity that happened on the premises. Well, how do you explain the other six observatories that closed down? Did each of those other observatories have simultaneous criminal activity happening? I don't think so. But Sheriff House is still aggravated and concerned. Is there a bomb threat? Is there an active shooter? Is it chemical? We need to know. So we know what kind of manpower to send up there without knowing it's dangerous for everybody. We have a duty to protect, and we can't protect them if we don't know what is going on. Reached by Gizmodo, Frank Fisher, public affairs officer at FBI's Albuquerque Division, would not comment on House's statements or provide any information about the investigation. He referred Gizmodo to Oro's statement from Sunday. Would you, can you imagine? I mean, you got to do it, right? You're a journalist. Okay, put in a call to the uh, FBI desk down there in New Mexico. You get the guy, yeah, who is it? Uh-huh. Who are you from? Because okay, yeah, I can't tell I can't talk about that right now. No. What do you what is he what do you expect him to say? Like you wouldn't believe. You would not believe what we saw up there. Holy shit. We had to shut it down. We had to shut it down because the people saw what was going on up there. There would be such a mass panic around this country and the world that wouldn't be the same. We had to shut it down. Oh, by the way, this is confidential. Um, House did not mince words in his criticism of the federal agency. I think it's chicken shit. The way the FBI handled it. I have a responsibility to protect my citizens. He told the local outlet, we've asked and asked, and they will not tell us anything. 
Does that surprise you, Sheriff? I don't think so. Come on now. Who are you dealing with here? You're dealing with the FBI. They look at you like you're, you're, a, little, you're a little ant. You may be a little fire ant. You may be a little pesky. You're still an ant. Not going to tell you anything. But I love it. I think it's chicken shit. I think it's chicken shit. I have a responsibility to protect my citizens. The FBI is thinking, yeah, we got a responsibility to keep people from freaking fucking out on this planet. Sheriff. Why don't you just go on back to your little town and have some of that really, really good green chili that New Mexico is so famous for. Let us handle the big stuff. But there's a wrinkle here. Well, there's always a wrinkle. Here is that wrinkle. A mystery man dies not too far away from the Solar Observatory in New Mexico. How about this? This is the wrinkle. The Sunspot Solar Observatory in Mexico reopened on Monday, September 17th, 2018. But people are dissatisfied with the official explanation as it offers a few new but vague details about the circumstances surrounding the evacuation. Even the local sheriff who was kept in the dark about the investigation throughout was skeptical, but uh, for the FBI to get involved that quick and be so secretive, there was a lot of stuff going on up there. Otero County Sheriff Benny House said, it's quoted from it by Alamogordo News. There was a Black Hawk helicopter, a bunch of people around antennas, in work crews on towers, but nobody would tell us anything. Okay. So this is all the backstory. Okay. All right. The facility closed down in an orderly fashion is now reopening. The residents have vacated their homes will be returning to the site. And all employees will return to work this week. A criminal activity, and they were concerned that a suspect potentially posed a threat to the safety of local staff and residents, really. And who, who is the suspect? A human? An alien? A humanoid? Or was it a UFO? To make it even more mysterious, on September 12, 2018, New Mexico State Police found a mystery man who died not far away from the Solar Observatory. Wow. According to the NPS release, while closing WSNM, park rangers discovered an unattended vehicle in the Alkali Flat Trail parking lot. After searching the immediate area, park rangers expanded their search to the Alkali Flat Trail, where they discovered an unresponsive man about a half a mile from the trailhead between 10 p.m. and 11 p.m., the release states. Um, let's see how long is that distance wise? So it's across the highway. So you've got to go, this, this observatory is really, really super remote and there's only one road in and it's kind of the circuitous road and you've got to go all the way across their freeway and onto the other side. So it's, um, it's not that far in terms of equidistance, but it certainly is more difficult to get to because of the route to get there. There aren't that many roads, but it's unusual to find somebody. Who, I mean, maybe it's just a dead person. I'm not saying that there is a connection, but it is strange, right? I'll keep on reading. Uh, any car park in an area needs to have a reason for being there. It's called, called any car parked in an area. People can't write anymore. Souter said, for example, our backcountry campers, they need to have a permit on their dash and back in our backcountry camping trails, which they have their water and camping gear. MPS will be coordinating with NMSP to, to investigate the incident. Of course, no further information is being released due to the ongoing investigation, they stated. Okay, we got a mystery man who's dead. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, and I, I, I guess we could look at, if we wanted to, sort of the reasons behind the closure. This comes off a of sore and dryer. It says uh, Aura has been cooperating with an ongoing 
law enforcement investigation of criminal activity that occurred at Sacramento Peak. It said in reference to the hill where part of the observatory is located during this time, we became concerned that a suspect in the investigation potentially posed a threat to the safety of local staff and residents for this reason or temporarily vacated the facility. Uh, while authorities and operators of the New Mexico Solar Observatory remained tight-lipped while the facility was shut down 11 days ago, enthusiasts have crossed police lines to film the area that turned into a ghost town, the Sunspot Solar Observatory at Sacramento, New Mexico, which promises to unlock the mysteries of the sun and its effects on the earth, has turned into a sort of terrestrial mystery after it was abruptly closed and evacuated at the request of the FBI with Blackhawk helicopters, which we know. Uh, let's see, Soren Dreyer says, I see two options here. As said before, UFO cover-up or prelude for the fake alien invasion, which the movie Independence Day and others were meant to prepare the public for. There's a huge number of films that have been funded by the Pentagon, and that is one of them. So, love to hear what you people think in the chat room. If you've got some ideas around this, yeah, this is my this is my uh, Miami disco shirt, Anna. I'm feeling Miami disco this morning. Last night I saw a video titled that referenced a dead hitchhiker near the observatory. Didn't know it was true or not. Have you any info? Well, I just read the story about the dead person that they found on that trail, which they could have just you know the, that person could have been near the observatory. And then uh, something might have uh, untoward might have happened to him and then relocated him to that trail. It's called a Vince Foster. Uh, yeah. Uh, what else? Anything else in the old chat room here? Anything else? Anything else going on? Well, how about a little, a little fun, a little levity, a little, uh, a little laughter. You guys want, you guys uh, want a little of that? Why don't I leave you with this story today? Dangerously horny dolphin ruins swimming for French town. So apparently there's a really horny dolphin on the loose off the coast of France. The village on the coast of France has banned swimming in the presence of Zafar. His name is Zafar, a bottlenose, bottlenose dolphin that has become problematically horny. Roger Lars, the mayor of Landavenic, issued a regulation last week that prohibits people from swimming and diving on the shoreline when Zafar is present, as well as coming within 50 yards of him. Zafar is wanting, needing, yearning social contact from cohorts, and that need isn't being fulfilled, Elizabeth Hawkins, lead researcher with Dolphin Research Australia. She told the Washington Post, it can try different dolphin behaviors toward humans and try to get that social fulfillment. <laughs> Zafar is insatiable, man. Zafar, the horny dolphin. Uh, some of these reported behaviors include rubbing up against swimmers, boats, and kayaks, as well as once from preventing a swimmer from getting back to the shore. She had to be picked up by a rescue boat. Sami Hassani the director of species conservation at Oceanopolis told Quest France that Zafar will rub against people in boats while he is in heat. What do you think of that, Jasper? What do you think of that? What do you think of Zafar? Um, that reminds me of Leonard Nimoy's character from Star Trek. Remember? Like they would like the Vulcans would have no emotion except for that. Like every was it seven year period where they go absolutely psychotic to have sex. What is it called? Far pawn or something like that. <laughs> Zafar is having his uh, his uh, Vulcan moment here. Zafar Hassan Hassani noted that Zafar is a solitary dolphin. Ah, now you're starting to feel sorry for him, meaning he left his group and lives alone. Oh. So far, the Telegraph reported that there are a number of factors as to why an individual dolphin lives alone, citing food availability, predator disturbance, reproductive strategies, the loss of a mate or companion, or that their group drove them out as a few possible reasons. Probably their group got tired 
of Zafar hitting on every 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 dolphin. Like the males were like, you gotta get this Zafar guy out of here. I mean, he is he is just, you know, out of control with the ladies. We need a united front and just get him out. That's what I think happened. Critics of the town's new bylaw believe it to be uh, a, an extreme reaction, given Zafar has never seriously injured anyone. Environmental law specialist Erwin Lacornac told the telegram, the telegram he plans to appeal the regulation. While the dolphin may not pose a serious threat, Zafar had a beloved relationship with the town before he went into heat. Zafar just loves the people of that town. He doesn't have anybody else. He's in heat. Just let, you know, get him a plastic dolphin. Get on the phone with the Japanese because they're good at this shit. Get them to like crank out a robot plastic dolphin sex doll for Zafar. Problem solved. Problem solved. Make it anatomically correct, you know, Provides Zafar with a little dolphin cavity, and boom. And then who knows? Maybe Zafar you keep the you know the 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 dolphin the sex dolphin there for Zafar, and they may have a great life together. Who knows? I feel sorry for this this dolphin now. While the dolphin may not pose a serious threat, Zafar had a beloved relationship with the town before he went into heat. There are experts who believe such regulation is also good for the dolphin who get too accustomed to human interactions. Their natural instincts for danger are weakened. Like there's really going to be a lot of danger off the south of France. There's horrible stories how people have interacted with these animals. That part, I get that part. Hawkins told the Washington Post, in fact, a 2008 study from Marine Connection argued that solitary dolphins become popular among coastal towns need more legal protection. (laughs) to prevent unintentional harm between humans and sea creatures. Maybe maybe Zafar can get in touch with Diane Feinstein. Maybe she'd help out Zafar. I would have I would have suggested um, Gloria Allred, but she only represents uh, females apparently. And Zafar is a male dolphin. If Zafar had been a female dolphin then that would have been uh, a totally different thing. Totally different thing. Um, I'm sensing a marketing opportunity here, you know, t-shirts, dolphin, free Zafar. I'm sensing like if I'm in that town, I'm selling t-shirts. What would be, uh, Viva Libre, Viva Lib, Viva Lib, right? Viva Lib Zafar and have his little smiling face on there. Poor Zafar. I still think the Japanese sex dolphin is probably the best uh, the best solution for Zafar. Let's get back into the chat room. Uh, let's see. Last night. Oh, yeah. She typed that before we read that, Robert. How about that? How about that? Joe, was, Joe and I were having a psychic link. I had that story lined up, ready to go. All three of those absurd. You see what we're doing here. What we're doing here is we're doing a a, a semi-professional podcast. And so I have to show up and be prepared and find these things and have, you know, a theme and a thread, all the stuff that matters. Uh, Judy says, George Webb says her dad is CIA. Of course he's CIA. Of course he's CIA. He's got, he's, there's, there's a trail. There is a trail. There, there are, Invisible footprints that lead back to her father as being CIA. And I, you know, look, I bet the Kavanaugh family has elite deep state ties as well. I don't have no, no doubt about that. And these are probably just warring Illuminati families. You know, this shit goes on all the time. Uh, anything else? Anything else in here? Nothing else? All right. Okay, so tomorrow I'll be back yet again for another edition of 15 Minutes of Flame. Uh, and I'll also be working with Emily Moyer on a off-planet 11th House mashup. And we're going to get into the, the Feinstein stuff as well. That'll be Feinstein and the gymnasts and 
Emily's got some ideas about the facility that I was talking about yesterday. Uh, that was the new, so again, a facility that uh, was in question was originally uh, a GM plant in Fremont, California, which later became a NUMI plant, which later became the Solyndra plant, which is now the Tesla plant. So we'll get into some of that as well tomorrow. Okay. I think we're done. Um, use your head to discern what's real, your heart to step when it's possible, and say a prayer for Zafar that he either goes through his heat cycle or you know, is somehow able to find love and relief amongst uh, a Japanese love dolphin.